This is uh, Mrs. Ochoa's sixth grade class at Garden City Elementary, and our lesson is the law of conservation of energy. Okay, thanks guys. Before I get started on the law of conservation of energy, it's kind of weird because I must take out a time for my product sponsorship. This program is sponsored by Quaker Oats. Yes, <laughs> the energy from Quaker Oats. In fact, at the end of this lesson, I hope you understand that. Well, I, I must say that this show is also sponsored by The Sun and Quaker Oats. Okay? Because uh, I could not talk, that's which is sound energy. I can't move, which is kinetic energy. And I'm getting a little hot. Thermal energy is, is because of Quaker Oats. Now you might go, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> that's okay, because you see, the sun is this giant 93 million miles away, 200 times bigger than the earth, nuclear reaction of hydrogen, bam, hydrogen, bam. Every second, it's sending thermal energy, it's sending ultraviolet, it's sending light, it's sending x-rays, gamma, all this stuff is coming to the earth. That's energy. And it's coming to us, and somewhere it's growing oats. And the oats are blowing in the wind, and then they come and they cut them down. And I go to Walmart, and I buy this, and I ate it this morning in my belly. So this show is brought to you by, and it's called the uh, Conservation And it's a law, law, conservation of energy. Now, that's kind of weird because in science we don't have a lot of laws. We have this law. Gravity. Gravity. Gravity is a law. You can't live without it. If you drop this and stay there, whoa, we'd all go, what happened? So the law, when we say it's a law, that's a big deal. So the law, so here's what's happened. The sun, which is called soul, has sent all this radiant energy, radiant energy, to the earth. And somewhere on the earth, these beautiful oats were growing, right? And they got cut down. So that sun's energy turned to what we call chemical energy. Have you studied this? Yes. yes. Now, chemical energy, which is kind of neat, because then I took that, and right now it's inside of my stomach. <laughs> Right now, it's inside of my stomach, kind of gross, but it's not alone. Because in my stomach, when I ate this oats this morning, first I chewed it up. That increased surface area. I added some saliva uh, to Liquids. get it mushy. It went down my esophagus into my belly, and my acids are in there. My enzymes are breaking it apart. But the cool part about it, <laughs> I'm not alone. Inside of my belly and yours are about a trillion little Flora, little bugs. Uh, you're never alone. Even when you have to stand in the corner, you're never alone. Because you have these things in you. And without them, you can't digest your food. You don't want food going in and coming out the same, right? That'd be a waste of chewing. Now, here's the thing. I have a little grandbaby. When my grandbaby was born just a few months ago, she had no flora, nothing inside her to help her digest the food. But the very first meal she had, when she nursed, she started getting the same kind of bacteria from her mother. And now, living in her belly and in your belly is a whole city that they, that, that little minions, that, that, that they go to work, I eat some oatmeal, they're breaking it down, they're reproducing, they are dying, they are defecating, they're taking, I mean, they're, they're living and dying all the time in your belly. But what they do is they turn this chemical energy into glucose. Glucose is a type of, oh, I spelled that wrong. Let me get that better for you. Ooh, look at that. Glucose. Gee. <laughs> I hate these things. Glucose is a type of sugar. Now, it goes through my body. But I'm, I'm going to give you a side, just a side thing. I worked for 10 years at a science camp for kids with a disease that they would die within a few days. And here's the weird part about this. Those kids would eat food, they would 
digest, go through their body, and the, the glucose, the sugar in their body was going really great. But inside of every one of their cells, the sugar, if this is like sugar, can't get in. You see, you and I have a little organ over here called the pancreas. And the pancreas, and here's what happens. Oh, man, when I see a steak on TV or cooking, I hear it sizzling. My mouth starts watering. My brain's going, get ready. You're going to have something good to eat. And, and all of a sudden, my pancreas goes, all right, boys, let's send the juices. And so when I eat a steak or any food, that sugar starts going through my body, and sugar comes to my cell, and before it gets to my cell, a little key unlocks it. In comes the sugar, and I can, through cellular respiration, move. Does anybody know what that special enzyme is that your pancreas makes? See, the kids in my camp, for whatever reason, either they were born that way or they got sick, their pancreas doesn't make this thing. So they can eat all this food and be feeling really, oh, and their blood may be filled with sugar, 200, 300, 400, 500 level. When it gets to 600 level, their organs start to die. Or maybe they go, I don't want to do this because my organs will die. So they don't eat, and their blood sugar level goes down to 90, 80, 70. When it gets to 30, they pass out, and they could die. So what do you do if you're a kid? that you can eat food, you can get sun, chemicals, into your stomach, your little minions, puts the glucose in your body. Does anybody know what that chemical's called? I bet you know somebody that has this. There's type one and there's type two. Oh. Yes. Diabetes. The disease is called diabetes, is when your pancreas doesn't make that. Does anybody know what that special magical enzyme is? Oh. There was a guy here in Indianapolis, very famous, came back from the war, went to Canada, and brought back how to make this stuff. His name was Eli Lilly. He started a company. They was, what they did was they, all across the United States, they, brought, they bought cow pancreases, processed them, and he was one of the first people to give a kid who had diabetes a shot. And now... Before they die, this magic enzyme would go open up and sugar. Anybody know what it's called? Eli Lilly went on to find a way to make artificial. They don't have to take cow pancreas anymore. And the kids in my camp, 80 of them, every day, five times a day, we check their blood sugar. They take a needle, prick their blood, see how if their blood sugar was 80, 90, 100, 300. And then they would count how what kind of food they would eat. The energy, like if we were getting ready to do the high ropes course or go on a hike, we want to make sure our blood sugar level was up. It's like having a battery. Has anybody heard of something called insulin? Is that have you heard of it? Does anybody know anybody that's type one or type two? Yes. Both of my aunts. Both of your aunts are they type one or type two? Um, I think they're type one. Type 1 means your pancreas doesn't make hardly any insulin. See, we make it naturally. But if you're a type 1, now the kids at my camp, they would have to give themselves a shot. Like if their blood sugar was low, the insulin didn't give them energy. The food gave them energy, chemical energy. But the insulin unlocked the cells so they could do that. Now that's pretty cool. 50 years ago, it was pretty much bad if you had diabetes. Now, unfortunately, kids, when you get older like me, I have not been exercising. Now, after Christmas, I'm going to start exercising, I promise. <laughs> because if you get older and you eat, 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 like, oh, man, there's so many things I love, and I don't exercise, here's what happens. My brain goes, all right, this idiot is eating more chocolate, but he's not exercising. we got to stop sending all that insulin. And sometimes when you get older, if you don't exercise and you eat, your body just wears out and doesn't send you insulin. And then you're in big trouble. So what does this have to do with energy conservation? Well, without insulin, you can't convert this. So right now, check this out. Right now, I'm talking kind of a lot. <laughs> and I hope I'm walking. And so i got heat coming out of me. That's thermal energy, right? Feel your head. Is it warm? If not, you may be dead. No, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it should be warm because you're alive. Number two, I'm moving. That's 
kinetic energy, right? Kinetic. And number three, hopefully you hear some sound energy coming out of me, right? Sound energy, right? This was last week's lesson. This is called energy transformation. Do you see how it transfers? Can you, can you get this? Is this? Do you get it? Sun, right? Goes to plants. Chemical energy, right? Chemical energy gets converted or transformed into sound, thermal, or kinetic. Now, here's help me out with this one. Everybody help me out with this one. You cannot. What do you guys? You cannot. You cannot. Create energy. Create energy. Destroy energy. Destroy energy. You can only transform it. You can only transform it. And that was kind of pathetic on the transformation moves. Come on, guys. You cannot create. You cannot create. You cannot destroy. You cannot destroy. You can only transfer. You can only transfer. Really? Are you guys over here like the walking dead? Uh, 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 okay. All right. So let's get into it. I, I'll tell you what. You have some blocks uh, on your worksheet. If I write it, you write it. Okay? All right. So... This one, I don't know. You might want to write concentration energy. I'm going to erase this. Here we go. Ready? Hey, wow. Amazing. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh. <laughs> all right. So, here's the deal. So, uh, there's three things we have to define. But first, um, I decided to give you a major hint on. You know, uh, I might give you a major hint on what kind of energy we're talking about. Electric. Electric. Really? Shazam energy? Did you study Shazam? No, this would be uh, uh, electric, electromagnetic energy. When are you going to make electric now, the, the weird part was I went to uh, a Goodwill and bought this. Lovely. But then I went to Walmart and I told them, like, you know, I need some of that flashy stuff that you iron on and you know what I mean. I'm going to make this suit to talk about conservation of energy with sixth graders and, and electrical energy. She looked at me like, security? <laughs> we got a guy. Anyway, I got it. So this is my electrical energy shirt, right? So in one box, we're going to talk about energy. So what is energy? Anyone you want. Energy is the ability, the ability to do work, okay? So hopefully I have some energy today that has the ability to do work, right? Right? Yes, yes? yes. I'll need a volunteer next, but just say the next one. So this makes me think, duh, what is work? New box, work. Anybody know what work is? Anybody know what work is? A scientist thinks work, yes. Work is when you use a force, right? To what? To move an object. And a force can be a push or pull. Alright, so I need a volunteer. Someone strong, big. Oh, Pick one for me. Put your hands up. Okay, you're gonna push against me. We're gonna see if Marlon can do some work. Now a scientist says you do work when you use a force. Use your force to move an object. I'm the object. Wait a minute, Marlon. Wait a minute. <laughs> this demonstration is brought to you by Quick Ropes. Okay? Push. Come on, man. Use a force. Move an object. Is he doing work yet? Is he doing work? No. Who's doing work now? You. Come on, man. Okay, now who's doing work? Marlon. Uh, so this is not work. This is the Battle of the Titans? No. This is... This is a force, but no work, because work is when you use a force to move an object. When you move Marlon. Move Marlon. Thanks. <laughs> Have a seat. Now, I've just increased my thermal energy. I'm starting to sweat because the oatmeal is being used up. All right, so let's try a different one. Let me electromagnet, magnetic, electromagnetic. Okay. And I want you to draw what happens next. This is going to be very strange, very crazy. Okay, so I have an apparatus here, and I'll let you guys gather around in just a second. But because of the sun, the oatmeal in my belly, I'm going to change mechanical energy now 
This is the part that's kind of cool. There was a scientist by the name of Michael Faraday that said if you can spin wire inside of a magnet, you can transform that into electricity. Why don't you guys come a little bit closer over here? Come on, close. Come close, but not too close because it's dangerous. If you're up here close, get on your knees. Anybody wants to come close? Come on. All right, so here we go. Energy transformation, right? Nice. Check it out. Now, I need a volunteer. Thanks for volunteering. It takes courage to volunteer. Go ahead and put one finger right here. Oh, wait a minute. First of all, do you uh, have a good heart? You're good. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, second, do you have insurance? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. In fourth grade, remember we studied about electric current and circuits, yeah. okay? So you remember that. Okay, I'm going to see if I can transfer sun, oatmeal, mechanical, electrical into sound and movement. Ready? I'm going to get shocked. Are you going to make a noise? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Then it might work. Let's see. Ready? On the count of three. You're so brave. <laughs> One, two. Wait a minute. I got to take this out because I don't want it to be used by the appliance. I want it to go to you. I have been back in case she moves her arm, knock you out, man. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, I know. You have to moisten. I hope you're getting nervous because the more you sweat, the more it conducts electricity. <laughs> this is very good. Moisten your finger. Lick your finger. Put it back out. I'm not going to lick it. Come on. Like that. Don't be a volunteer. No, oh, never mind. Okay, here we go. Ready? You're very brave. Thanks for volunteering. Here we go. One, two. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to think about this. In fourth grade, electricity goes out of the source, along the path, through the appliance. Oh, it has to come back. I need your other finger. Go ahead and moisten it. Wait a good. Um, thank you for volunteering again. Let's give a round of applause for volunteering. Thank you so much. We're not done yet. Pick your finger up. You're killing me. Uh, um, now, Jessica, you are so brave. Um, are you ready? I'm going to see see if you can find any transfer of electrical energy. Can you guys let me know if you notice any difference in Jessica? On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> what? What? Talk to us. What's your deal? What? what happened to her voice? We lost her voice. Mr. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, uh, she volunteered for this. That's not my fault. Uh, so, did, we also noticed that it transferred her muscles. The electricity in her muscles caused them to contract, luckily. And it also caused her voice to change, weirdly. <laughs> but, you know, in science, Jessica, in science, it's not really a law until we do it again to see if it really worked. Am I going to miss Jessica. No. Your right. You promise? Okay, let's see. There we go. Ready? Lick your fingers. Come on, moisten your fingers. Man. No, this is good. All right, so we're going to transfer, transferring energy, transferring energy. One, two. All right, yeah. Here's the deal. All right. Um, uh, inter internet people, yeah. we're going to take a timeout and we're going to set up and we'll see if we can do an entire class for a shocking energy transformation. Timeout. Ready? We have a, we've completed the circle. You guys, moisten your fingers. Moisten your fingers, you two. Okay. Don't touch. Separate. Here we go. You should be able to feel this. <laughs> Ready? energy that is potential. Potential energy is stored. Potential means stored, right? And kinetic means 
movement. Kinetic is something that moves. Now there's three types of potential energy, three types that you should have been studying in the last week. One, it's called gravitational. Gravity, gravitational. If you remember that one, gravitational. You're writing this on a box. Two is something called elastic. Cool. Elastic potential. Uh, we're going to call that PE. What you know what PE stands for? Potential. 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 No. See, that's the kind I'm talking about. Please try to focus on this. Number three. We have gravitational potential energy. We have elastic potential energy. And the last one is chemical. And PE stands for what? Potential energy. Thank you. Potential energy. So here is an example of potential chemical energy. This is wood. wood. Where did it get its energy from? The tree. Sun. Sun. Tree. Sun. 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 If I burn this, it gives off heat, and thermal, smoke. and light. Smoke. Actually, try to think of this in terms of our lesson, which is energy. And so there is no such energy called smoke energy. There is an energy called thermal heat, and there's an energy called light. Now, this one, so later, it was something like this that people kind of invented. And they took wood, and they found out that if you can burn wood without oxygen, it doesn't burn all the way. And this is charcoal. Charcoal used to be wood. Wood used to be a tree, the tree from the sun. This much charcoal has enough thermal energy as this piece of wood, but it's more convenient to carry. So people invented charcoal. Luckily in Indiana, or unluckily, see, this is the science. I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky. Lucky that we have it. Unlucky in that it's not a very clean fuel. This I brought from southern Indiana. This looks like a tree, and it actually was part of a tree. This was 10 feet of trees millions of years ago that were squeezed down. This is called a fossil fuel. The solid stuff is called coal. coal. Thank you. Coal. This is coal. In Indiana, we have seven layers of this, but it's buried about 400 feet under the dirt. And so here's a weird thing that you got to figure out. If... I have to get a big truck, put gas in the fuel in the truck, scrape all the dirt away, get this down, dig it up, send it to Indianapolis. It gets crushed, powdered, burned. We use it to boil water to make steam that turns a turbine just like that electrical. That's how these lights right here come from burning coal. Is that good or bad? That's a hard... Yeah, but it's, uh, it's bad because it gives off pollution and smoke. But it's good because we have a school. We have electricity. That's a whole other, that's a whole other thing. But this used to be a, a tree. It took millions of years. This is non-renewable. We're not making any more of this. We're finding it, taking it out of the ground. It's a natural resource. That's a material from the earth that we need and use. Ah, sometimes gooey stuff comes out of this. That's called crude oil. Yes. When you have oil, they get that out of the ground also. They turn that into gasoline, into plastic. This chair right here is made from crude oil. Your airplanes, jet oil, even the Vaseline you put on your skin came from oil. Now, finally, some of it bubbles up. How many people turned on their stove this morning at home and blue flames came up? That is natural gas. When these trees died, gas came up and formed a bubble. We drilled down, capture that gas, send it to your house. When, we, when this died, we send a drill down, oil comes up. We turn that into gasoline, into kerosene, into di uh, diesel. When that's all done, we scrape away the dirt, and we dig this up and burn it. When this is gone, it's gone. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? You decide. Or try to decide. Yeah, but it pollutes. I mean, it's hard to... But but we need it. It has a It's detrimental, beneficial. Oh, but it is an energy source. This is chemical, chemical potential energy. This is another type of chemical, or, or actually potential energy. 
Good thing this is not real. This is a model of a piece of uranium. Now, uranium is radioactive. That's another time of energy source. It is radiation that goes through things. If this was real, we'd all be dead in like a week. Radiation is an invisible force that sends heat through. Now, this is good because it's so powerful, but it's bad because it's so dangerous. You know that in, maybe you heard about this about 10 years ago in Japan, there was a tidal wave, an earthquake and a tidal wave, and it destroyed their nuclear reactor. Did you not hear about that? I did. Fujiya, it was the, well, this thing caught fire, and everybody within 20 miles had to leave everything, clothes, money, food on the table because radiation went through them. In Chernobyl, 25 plus years ago in Russia, someone did the wrong switch, because this stuff has to be protected, otherwise it gets real hot. It melted the building, a big fire, and people had to leave. Oh, they can come back in like a thousand years. So this, is it good or bad? Yeah. This, I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm saying that it's important to know what these are. These are all examples of potential, potential chemical, potential energy. So we got several of those examples. I got another example that uh, this one's kind of interesting. Here we have, I'm going to do two examples at once. This one is gravitational. Gravitational. So a new box, make a new box called gravitational. Gravitational is, well, it's a force in the universe. This is an iron cannonball. I'm going to be okay as long as I don't drop it. I'm sorry. No, it's not my desk, but it's okay. Uh, because, Patrick, as long as I don't drop it three times, because if it's three, it, ex it explodes. So there's one more. This is... I just saw a chunk come off his desk. I don't know what's going on. There is a lot of... Gravitational potential energy. If I let go of this, I've never let I've never dropped it three times. I'm a little worried about dropping it three times. If it hits the table, it's a cannonball. Okay. Did I tell you this may be the last chance I get to tell you this? This demonstration is brought to you by Quicker Oats. From the sun transferred to oats into my belly into sound and kinetic energy and gravitational please don't hit the table. Potential energy. Now, that one's kind of heavy, but this one, stay. For example, here we go. Very strange. No energy, gravitational potential, kinetic energy. <laughs> kinetic energy, yes. What's pulling it down? Gravitation, gravity. So, it, I know, it's amazing. I know. No energy, gravitational potential energy. What? Please. Now, so I'm not saying, you know, I, I'm kind of, I try to be hip. I try to be cool. So I've been working on my dance moves. No energy. This is uh, potential gravitational energy. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. But you know what? He's doing the McDurkin. I, I tried. I, I think it's called the. Uh, KK or the Hey Hey or the uh, no this is a no energy potential potential this is elastic potential energy I will I, I turn the spring yeah boom yeah so that is elastic potential energy elastic potential energy most of the time though when I try to do a dance move no energy elastic potential energy most of my dances end up looking something like uh, this, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so. That's cool. That's the best dance ever. See, I like that. Okay, you're a fan. All right. So, uh, I tell you, um, you seem like a person I can trust. Can I, can I volunteer? Thanks for volunteering. Come here. Come here. Come here. Stand up. So, uh, what's your name? Natalia. Take your. Let me see your pretty face. There we go. Hold this right here. Now look, this is no energy, all right? This is elastic. Oh my goodness, can I trust her? Yeah, probably. Okay. This is no energy, right? This is elastic potential energy. 
On the count of three, you let go. I hate this part. Can I trust you? Won't let go, real she? No energy. Everybody say elastic potential. On the count of three, let go. Okay. One, two. Why'd you pull it? Why'd you pull it? Talk to me. She saw pull out my hand. Do it again. Look. No energy. No energy. It's not called torture. It's called teaching. No it's energy. Awesome. Elastic potential. On the count of three, let go. You count this time. One, two, three. Why? Why are you doing that to me? She broke it. See, really, this is a test. Uh, can you trust? Uh, who's? I'm actually letting go. No, it's not fair, is it? You're not the kind of kid, though, that will hurt me, are you? You do. You do little things. <laughs> I think you are the kind of kid. No energy, elastic, potential energy. One, two, three. Oh! How did time. you do that? Yeah. All right. So here, look. Here's no energy. And let me. Okay. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some work. I'm gonna use a force to move an object. Tell me when. I hate this part. More, more potential energy. What? Come close. If it explodes, I don't want to be the only one. Right? More. Keep going. More. What? Tell me when to stop. Okay, here. Now, no energy. And this is elastic. Hold this right here. On the count of three, let's see if we can transfer that into. See if you can see the kinetic energy and the sound energy. On the count of three, let go. One, don't even hurt. <laughs> Two, three. There it is. Um, draw a picture quick. Draw a picture. I told myself they got to me the whole Draw a picture of it flying through. The big flying hot dog. It was a hot dog. Oh, man. Okay, we have like yeah. time to do a few more. That is an example of elastic <laughs> potential energy <laughs> turning into kinetic day. energy. Now, I gotta take this off because I've been working out, man. All this, uh, you know, all this movement and all this talking and all this has turned into a lot of thermal energy. But I'll tell you what, you know, I'm getting kind of old. But you know, you know, my my wife, she doesn't, you know, she doesn't talk to me that much, so I'm not impressing her. So I thought if I work out, work out, you know, it's like she might be impressed by this. So I need your help. This is no energy. But it's elastic. And if I can bend this, I'd like to hear a nice ooh. Okay? I want you to hear, I want to hear ooh. Potential. Ooh. Not yet, I haven't done it. <laughs> Wait a minute, ready? No, ah, when I let go and make it kinetic. Ooh for potential. Ah for kinetic. Ooh. You think she's gonna be impressed? No. 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 Yeah. Here we go, ready? Oh, may I tell you that this demonstration is sponsored by Quick Roads. Here we go. Ready? Ooh. No. Ooh, not ah. Uh. <laughs> so, no energy. <laughs> Once again, the class of the Walking Dead. Uh, uh. No, this is ooh. ooh. Three, two, one. Ah. Now, Majority there, there was a scientist. His name was Albert Einstein. Now, would you do me a favor? Go to the back room. Oh, no, go, yeah, yeah, go to the back room. It's Einstein. He's alive. Now, he usually studied how energy and how particles move. So what I want to do is study how he moves. Oh, yes. We're going to transfer potential to connect you back. Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay, are you ready to catch him? Not yet. <laughs> no energy. Say it. No energy. Oh, this is ooh. Uh, what, what are you? Here we are. Here we go. Get ready to catch him. Here comes Albert Einstein. Kinetic energy. Three, two, one. Kinetic energy. Did you catch him? All right, let's give him a round of applause. Bring him back. Back to our friend here, the cannonball. Huh? So, I'm going to show you another chemical potential energy. And so, hmm, 
I need your help on this. Oh, what enthusiasm. Let me try that again. I'm going to need your help for this. can't wait. There you go. Let's give her some sound energy. These are two iron cannonballs that are rusted. Now, get closer. You keep moving away. Huh? You moved away again. Okay. Uh, but here's the thing. If I add aluminum, we're going to do a chemical reaction now. And now it's going to be the rust and the aluminum. And I hope this works. Uh, yeah, me too. Why are you backing up? <laughs> She's like, I don't want to die. <laughs> okay, so let's see if I can make a thermite reaction. We're going to transfer some energy. Are you ready? Fire. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Some sound energy. Under new fire. <laughs> so, like, Right? One more time. This is a glancing blow. Yeah. What? Like don't girl. hurt me. You try it. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt you. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, it's a glancing blow. Not. Wait, me out of the way. Oh. Yeah. Very good. One more. Yeah. Incredible yeah. sound energy, sound energy. So if I, if I light this right here, nothing. But if I add water to it. He's going to light your desk on fire. It turns to a gas, and the gas is flammable. flammable. So as a solid, no. A liquid, no. But as a gas, yes. So let's see if we can do our last experiment on chemical potential energy. So to do this, I'm going to put a little bit of it right here in this lid. I'm going to put a little more right in here. I'm going to shake it down. And this is called knock your socks off. Oh yeah, this smells. You want to smell this? No, okay. So I'm going to knock my sock off in my old sock. And let's see here. Put that in there like that. Put this in here like this. So oh, this is the dangerous part. You ready to cover your ears? Oh, no. Wait, wait. Don't. Here we go. As long as I don't point at anybody, we're okay. <laughs> ready? No. Set. Where are you going? I'd move if I was you. Are you ready? Three, two, one. What did I forget? I forgot something. It didn't work. Water. Water. I gotta make a gas. Here we go. Oh yeah. Now we've made it a gas. Three, two, one. Chemical potential energy. You guys have been great. And let's see if we have knock your socks off. Great. Cover your ears. Two, one. Remember, conservation is a law.